Well, grace and peace, everyone. I'm Pastor Riley, and we want to welcome you to Believe in God's Word broadcast. God and His Word is the final authority. Amen. Well, um, <clears throat> we just finished a great series on living from the inside out. We did live last Monday. And so I want you to be on the lookout. Every subject we do, we take one one um, on that last, you know, once we finish the subject, we we um, we do a, a live session, you know, Q&A, review, get you get some um, feedback from you. So definitely be on the lookout for that um, so that you can be part of it. We'd love for you to be part of that um, session. And we'll, we'll let you know when, because sometimes the sessions run, you know, um, for, for, for weeks, and sometime a little over a month or so, but I'm trying to get them done within six weeks, um, and that way you can get a paint, we can paint a nice picture concerning the subject, living from the inside out. Before that, we talked about the blessing, that you're empowered to prosper. And tonight, we're going to start a series on how to study the Word of God, how to understand the Word of God. Some great keys. When we talk about keys, we're talking about um, <clears throat> keys or knowledge. The Bible said my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. And that's in, in Hosea. And then in Isaiah 5, it talks about um, that hell, people are going through hell. Sort of like that. I'm not encouraging now. He says hell is open his mouth to consume the God's people because they have no knowledge. So we want to show you how to read the Bible. And the Bible is not as intimidating as we think it is. You know, and we'll counteract a lot of things like where the Bible says the Bible is um, that we, um, we, you know, how, what's that saying? They talk about um, God works in mysterious ways. We're going to talk about why Jesus said, <clears throat> that is given to us, and then we got to find out who us is, to know the mysteries of God. So we're going to look at some things where we need to start from, and then we're going to get our mind real clear, because I'm going to deal with uh, <clears throat> dispensational truths, uh, what dispensation are we in, um, and then I'm going to deal with uh, uh, the the uh, what you call it um, I have it here written down um, understanding the true nature of God in the, in the New Testament what that means and New Testament New Covenant oh, that's a, is that the same word and then I'm going to talk about the Old Testament in Hebrew the New Testament in Greek you know and then I know there's a lot of study tools out there uh, you know we, we have the um, the different translations, and then we'll try to we'll, we'll try to help you to see um, how to, you know, really discern the translations, you know, because sometimes they'll have you like, well, you have two natures, and it, but the Bible says we only have one nature, but we have a different law in our flesh. So, so we're gonna just try to help you to understand that now. <clears throat> the first thing that qualifies us to even try to read this Bible is what Jesus said to Nicodemus that came to him by night. And the Bible said, he, you know, Nicodemus had said, listen, we know that thou art rabbi, thou art a great teacher, and we know that no man can do these miracles except, except the, um, except um, except God be with them. And Jesus said, look, truly, truly, I say unto you, this is John 3, 1, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So, and now remember Nicodemus, he was the ruler of the Jews. This man was highly educated. Um, he had the you know, he had the, the credentials to prove it. 
But it's not interpreting the word from your intellect. It's not interpreting the word to how educated you are. Now the Bible says, and I'm going to just give you some scriptures. And like these sessions going to just sort of like get our minds and hearts open to see. And then we want to make sure uh, we'll show you what it means in this session to be qualified to read the word of God. I mean, some oh boy, qualified? Yes, yes. I'm going to show you how simple it is, how simple and easy it is to be qualified to re even read the word. Because he tells Nicodemus, if you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That word see means to perceive, to understand, to operate from that realm. And this is important because in this study, you'll see that that's what God meant to restore the kingdom of God back to mankind again after Adam lost and fell. Now, the Bible says in Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding, not to the smartest, to the simple. <laughs> Because now we're going to deal with being born again. So Nicodemus says, he says, listen, he says, I'm old. Shall I go back to my mother? That's, he saw it on a natural level. And Jesus said, listen, what is born of the flesh is of the flesh. What is born of the spirit is of the spirit. So he's telling him, once you're born again spiritually, now you can see, you can perceive, you can understand, you can operate from a higher realm of living, the spiritual realm, as it, as it relates to the kingdom of God. So he's telling him, it's not about being born of the flesh. He's talking about being born of the spirit. Now, in 1 Peter 2, um, and I know you may know this, and that's okay. I just want to make sure there's other people that didn't, don't know this, you know. So in 1 Peter 1.23, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. Being born again, not of natural seed but of supernatural seed, incorruptible seed, which is by the word. So the scripture also says when he was talking to Nicodemus, he says that um, what is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the spirit is spirit. So he's talking about being born again of the spirit. And that's where we get the term is, oh, that's, that, that's the born again believers. Well, for anybody that's in Christ, for anybody to be born again, you're going to have to be born again, born of the Spirit. He, say, he, say, he says, except you be born of the water and of the Spirit, you cannot enter. Now, Jesus is still talking to Nicodemus. You can't even enter into the kingdom of God. Now, people say, what's the water? I know we know in a natural birth, you're born after the woman's what? Water break. We can say that, right? And in the spirit realm, you're born again the moment you receive the word concerning the lordship, the kingship, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for all humanity. Hopefully we can explain that a little more down the line. But when you accept Jesus as Lord, that's Romans 10, 9, after hearing this gospel, he took your sins, took your sicknesses, took all your failures, and he took the whipping for us, and through his death, burial, and with his stripes, we're healed, and also he redeemed us, and made, and gave us the, uh, the, the, the privilege and right to call God his father. Once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, then you're born again. Everything, your whole slate is clean, not up to the point you got saved. It's clean past the point you got saved. He's the same yesterday, today, throughout all the ages. And I will not do I will not be doing you justice never not explaining that and giving you an opportunity 
doing these sessions as we read the Word of God, um, how to study the Bible and have you and qualify you. That's what qualifies you to read. You must be born again. Amen. Once you get born again, you can see the scriptures, not from the intellect, not from an emotional perspective, but you're going to see the scriptures from a spiritual perspective. And I don't mean everything you read, you're going to understand right away. But it does mean that you are qualified to understand it. And I'll tell you why. He says, being born, again, not of corruptible seed, we said, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. So now you are birthed by the very word you are reading. It's the word logos here. Yeah. And this is called the written word of the, this written word is logos. <laughs> Amen. So now as you sow that word into your heart and accept it, and one of the things that I've learned to do is um, in Thessalonica, the first chapter, it said they received the word. And this word worked effectually in them, had a full effect in their life because they heard the word and they received the word as the very word of God, not the word of men. <laughs> Amen. Because some people say, well, this Bible, um, you know, man wrote it. No, First Peter doesn't say that in Second Peter. It says that no scripture is given by private interpretation. It was written um, in old time by holy men who spake inspired of God. God breathed inspired by God. He, which he gave it to holy men who spake as the spirit gave them utterance. So and this and this Bible is the account of, of God's love, God's care, God's purpose. All of this in, in this word is for us. The scriptures say all scripture, 1 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is by inspiration of God and is profitable. These scriptures are profitable for us. Well, God give us these scriptures not to be afraid of him, not to run from him, not to be confused about him. And God wrote these scriptures, had these scriptures written so that we can see the love of God. We can see the promises of God. We can experience the power of God as we operate in the purpose, for the purpose of God in this earth. And so this, he said, it is profitable um, for doctrine, teaching, um, for reproof, dismantling. Uh, what we call uh, erroneous thinking for correction to make right what's wrong right and you say um, uh, instructions in righteousness so he wants us to come in alignment with him operate from the system of the kingdom that is now deposited in us and we're in the kingdom according to Colossians 1:13 translated us, he took us out, power, delivered us from the power of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So all this introduction, but this is so powerful to understand because he says to instruct us in righteousness that every one of us, the man of God, the woman of God, the child of God, the people of God, all humanity that will be saved and then uh, be able to be equipped. Um, the man of God may be equipped, fully furnished for every good work. God wants to bring the very best out of you. And we have languages today. I'm trying to be the best version of, our, of myself. Well, we're really trying to be the best version of God. <laughs> we're made in his image. We're going to manifest him in course. Do we, any man be in Christ, a new creature. So we are new creatures in Christ, but we, we can be the best version of our real self out here. You know, but it's going to happen with the word. So we're going to dive into the word in a few moments. I'm just still in introduction. So, so we see what qualifies us. The moment you're born again, you're born of the word of God. 
and you have the ability to understand God's word. You have the ability to walk in this word, to use the word of God. And let's not forget the name of Jesus. So let's just look at that because how do we say that accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it qualifies you. You have to stop. Your language has to change. Your thinking has to change. Um, your spirit man has already changed, but the thinking and your speech and your believing has to change. And it's very, very important. And this is why you, God had you to tune in to hear this because the name of this broadcast is Believing God's Word. I believe it has to change. And I want to say this is that, um, and, and then now we are making God in our personal lives, who is now our father legally, our, the final authority. Amen? Now, let's go real quick. Um, we talked about Jesus. Jesus, you know, um, let's go to 2 Timothy 2.17. I'll do a few scriptures and then we'll, we'll set up for the next session. Um, well, Hebrews 10.7. Hebrews 10.7 says that sacrifices and and offerings, God was not pleased. They didn't please God, but they appeased him. In the Old Testament, and too many times, we try to make, we try to fit the Old Covenant Testament. Remember we said we're going to define words. The Old Covenant Testament um, agreement into the New Testament. And one was under the law. And one is under grace. So we have to know the difference. We are now in the dispensation of grace. And dispensation of grace, we'll find out later on, doesn't mean that you, you're not accountable to God. You can just live any kind of way. It means that God is now in you and everything you have was freely given to you. Everything you are was freely given. You didn't qualify for it. Jesus qualified for us. And the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 7, it says, Lo, I will come. It says, Sacrifice and offerings, thou was not pleased, but thou hast prepared a body. Prepare me a body. And that's when Jesus came. He sent his son, Jesus, born of a woman, under the law to redeem us from every curse so we can walk in the blessing. And then the scripture says, um, Lo, I I come in the volume of the book. And I looked up the word volume. It means, you know, they did them on scrolls and with the thing. It means the whole roll. How about that? <laughs> he came in the whole roll. That's, you know, in the volume of the book. Glory to God. And so when we understand that Jesus is the very word of God. John 1 says, In the beginning was the word, capital W, the word was with God, and the word was God. Glory to God. And it's the word logos. And it connects to you being born again. You were born of the logos. We picture this. We're the same substance Jesus is. Boy, that's mind-boggling to the natural mind. You know, what I'm telling you, that's what he's saying. And then he says, the word became flesh. Back there again, same word, logos. The word became flesh. 14th verse of, of John 1. And we beheld his glory, the, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Glory. And now think about it. That's what you and I was born that's the that's what we we're born out of the word of god with the word of the very word of god so you have i'm gonna keep saying this to you until the holy spirit convicts you in, to convince you that you are qualified as a believer to understand the word of god the entrance of that word gives light understanding to the simple not the most educated the simple one that word gets in like a seed get into the ground we'll talk about it it knows how to grow it'll grow up in understanding it'll grow up in manifestation in your life and you and i are born of that word so the word became flesh we beheld this glory full 
of grace and truth. Glory to God. And truth, we'll see, is the word of God. Now, so what are we doing? We are going to rightly divide the word of truth. And we're going to talk about that in our next session. Okay? We're going to talk about rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, I'm glad. Thanks for being here with us with this introduction. But we got a lot of things to cover. We got four to six weeks. Never know. Might be longer, but I'm looking at enough time until you can not be intimidated as a believer by this word of God. The Bible calls this the word of life. It's the word that will birth the very life of God. And when we get rid of the intimidation and the slot, you know, I don't, I don't understand all of these things. But we're gonna, we're gonna, you, the whole, this word is gonna reveal itself to you, and I'm telling you, you're gonna, you're gonna live the best life you can live down here. It's a, it's a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. It's full of direction. Full of protection, full of provision, <laughs> and full of authority. Amen. It's upholding all things by the word of his power. Well, that concludes our session. Now, we just want to um, encourage you to, if, to press like if you liked it. And be honest if you liked it. And then also to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And then share with families and friends. Our goal on this particular, uh, on what we're doing here on this program is God, God gave me this, the Lord gave the word. Psalm 68, 11, and great was the company of them that got that word out. So we want to uh, be, want you to be part of our, our Believe in God's Word community and company to aid us in getting God's word out. Amen. So listen, until next time, we love you. We appreciate you. And just keep, listen, let God, make God in your life um, and his word the final authority.